Well, firstly, it's a great opportunity today and these days to be able to celebrate 30 years of um, the role of the presence of Franciscans at the United Nations. This is not insignificant, nor is it indifferent to the whole direction, I would say, that, that began with the person of St. Francis of Assisi, his founding of a movement sometime around 1204, 1205. Several things that are important to keep in mind, though, behind this story of Franciscan International stands a person and stands persons, if you will. First, the, the one person is, is St. Francis of Assisi, who himself was a man who lived in turbulent times. He lived in a period of time when people were not re respected for who they were, their dignity. He lived at a time when there were many changes going on within society. He lived in a time when there were wars, small neighboring state wars, if you will, and the role of superpowers uh, at the time, France and Germany. So the context, even though it was a 13th century context, 12th, 13th century context, there are some elements that are very sim similar to today. And I think that's what makes it significant to understand the person of Francis Bassisi. First, because he's a person who understood. He, he himself had to go through a personal crisis. He himself, uh, at the beginning of his own life, did not understand the real plight of the poor, nor did he understand the impact that conflict has on people, except upon himself. And so a series of things took place within his own life. He was involved in the, uh, he first he confronted people who were themselves excluded from society, excluded from political participation. And I think there were some questions that started to emerge in his own life. Why is it that some groups are allowed in and other groups kept out? And I think the second element is that he himself participated in the wars, these internecine wars that were taking place in what is now called Italy, but they were small city-states fighting against each other, seeking patronage from superpowers. And so I think that uh, Francis himself had to undergo, he probably certainly engaged in, in combat and probably also uh, took the lives of some people, probably killed some people. And I think this had another impact upon Francis's reflection on the nature of violence and that any justification for violence because slowly in his own life he began to see a transformation taking place. A transformation where he finds himself attracted to defend and to be present with those who are poor and excluded and also particularly the lepers who were a small colony outside of Assisi. But also uh, I think there's even he spent a year in prison in Perugia and I think that experience of being a prisoner also had an impact upon him. It made him stop and think, what is, the, what, is, what is the nature of human existence? What are we called to build as human beings together? And I think out of those two crises points, if you will, the crisis of, of having to confront people who were excluded and having gone through the conflicts and the war, taking people's lives, he could no longer justify one or the other. That's why, so his conversion was, was spiritual, certainly. He identifies himself as a person. He believes that God intervened in his life. On the other hand, it was also extremely social because he found himself drawn and attracted and moving toward the direction of trying to defend the rights, being with the people, trying to make a place at the table for those who were excluded, those who were, whose rights were trampled upon, uh, and, and I think this is the story. So if that's the background for who St. Francis is, and particularly the other piece that came in later on, Francis was even moved to go to the very heart of where the Christian and Muslim war was being conducted in the Holy Land. It was the um, time of the Crusades. And he goes there and he tries to promote a message of peace. It's not received, the message of peace is not received by the Christian envoy from the Holy See. But it seems to have been maybe some, there been some, there be some welcoming on the part of the um, Muslim uh, leader of uh, Malik al Kamen, uh, who was the Muslim Sultan, who was in charge of the forces. So I don't guess what I'm trying to suggest is all of these different elements, they seem to be pieces of, of strands unconnected. But slowly as Francis came to discover the dignity of the human person, and the centrality of the human person in the eyes of God and what should be in the eyes of human societies, uh, these pieces began to come together. And as they came together, Francis found himself articulating a message addressed to those who were poor and excluded. He found himself progressively uh, involved in no longer the promotion of war and conflict, but of peace and reconciliation. And at the end of his life, he also had felt he had to come to terms with already signs of humanity's impact upon the, upon the environment, upon nature, 
and he came to a reconciliation of peace that each and every element in, that exists in the world participates in one community. And we have to, Pope Francis talk, calls this our common home. And I think Francis of Assisi came to this community already. So peace, the poor, and the planet are the three options, if you will, the three determining factors for what led progressively Franciscans to come to the UN. And obviously, between the 13th century and the 20th century, there's a huge gap. Franciscans throughout the period played different roles, sometimes better, sometimes worse, but played a role in trying to promote this, these three elements of poverty, peace, and the, 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 the planet. And I think that is what led 30 years ago Franciscans who had worked in countries where there was no respect for the, for the poor particularly, but so many people being pushed out and excluded, their rights being deprived, the situation of people running for their lives because of conflicts and wars, some of them over resources and, and water resources, over uh, the destruction of their fields, etc., for mining uh, and, and other um, exploitation. Um, and I, I think these elements are what pushed Franciscans to reflect together, Franciscan priests, brothers, religious, and laity, to what can we do now today in this world to try to promote the care for and respect for all human rights, particularly for the poor, promoting peace and reconciliation, and respect for and dignity of the, of the created universe. That's why we're at Franciscans International. The two things, two reasons why the UN. The first reason the UN is because there is no other body that exists in the whole world that brings together virtually all the nations around a, a, a table where they can discuss together and pursue solutions that are contrary, solutions that are contrary to what I call the logic of exploitation, the logic of violence as the sol final solution, and so I think this is, was a natural thing for the Franciscans to come to the UN. Already in the UN Charter, we feel that there are many elements, and in the uh, um, Declaration of Human Rights, the, they're already containing elements uh, that, that are very, very in tune with who we are, uh, the definition of the charism that we have or the mission that we have. And we felt, I think, an affinity, but not only affinity, we felt a responsibility because if the United Nations is a place where the actors who make the decisions for that have an impact on every human person and on the planet. If that's where it takes place, we need to be there. We should, and, and, and as to be there as a presence of building bridges, bringing people together, bringing the human face to the UN from the experience we have from what is called the grassroots, but also making sure that we are constantly connected with the grassroots as well. This, this is why we're here.